Uh, thank you. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the Summer Academy, Camera Austria, and Market Photo Workshop for this great opportunity that they gave me. Uh, firstly, I would start with myself. My name is Tandile Zolibanzi from South Africa, uh, Johannesburg. Uh, I started uh, uh, learning photography in Market Photo Workshop in 2008. Uh, until now, I was still there. I'm um, sort of like currently a course assistant in Market Photo Workshop, and I also participated in a number of exhibitions. One of them was sort of like a series that was in German. It was in, I sort of like forgot the name. Uh, it was uh, Hands Up. We did it with the GTZ company. So it was exhibited in GTZ uh, office. So also some of the exhibitions that I participated were in South Africa, around Johannesburg. So this uh, series that I'm going to show now, it's, it's called Hands. So I decided to concentrate on hands, as hands, sometimes they build, uh, they make comfort, uh, they provide a uh, lot of things, they sort of like, uh, make our lives go on, sort of like they also, on, on the other hand, they can also destroy. They can also make havoc in different ways. So that's why I, I chose to photograph uh, these kind of projects. So then I think uh, the questions will come after. We'll just now play a slideshow. Then if anyone has any question, then we'll take them. So mostly some of the hands, they were sort of like uh, doing their activities that they normally do that make them to sort of like be happy. So also this work, it was done in Johannesburg. This was sort of like a memorial service of a singer like it do Do you sort of like maybe have any questions about the work? Or maybe if I can sort of like play the slideshow again. <laughs> Do you sort of like have any questions about the, the work here? Can you repeat the question? <laughs> so it, it like this, pose. All right. All right. Uh, I did like speak to the people, but I didn't tell them what to do. Yeah, it's sort of like these uh, gestures. Yeah, yeah. With, yeah, yeah. Sort of like these were the poses that they chose to make. Yeah. <laughs> so the other series is about traders, of which I'm also currently working on. So this body of work, I, I also 
did it in Johannesburg. Mostly, like, I work uh, around my environment where I stay. <coughs> so this also, I focused on traders because, like, most of the times when I'm around Johannesburg, sort of, like, I always like see these people, they're sort of like standing early in the morning with their stand and again late afternoon they are always there. So sort of like most of the times they're sort of like fixed in one place, they are, they are not moving, they're always there selling stuff. So I got interested and then decided to sort of like do some uh, small project with them. Uh, and yeah. So also most of them, like what they sell, it's sort of like they sell sweets, uh, cigarettes, they don't sell sort of like lots of things and stuff. And that also made me to be interested that how could they make a living with those sort of like small things. But eventually when I made some talks with them, so uh, speaking and uh, having some interviews, you find that they were sort of like making a living with this. Sometimes you find that they make enough money for them to sort of like survive. And some of them too, they were sort of like coming from different African countries, so to South Africa. So when they get to South Africa, they don't find much jobs, so they end up selling on the street, of which it's, it's better than nothing. Yeah. So others, what they do, they normally sell on the trains, and then when they get outside the train, they pack their things nicely and then like, for example, this image. So I also used movement to sort of like to emphasize my point that these people are sort of like fixed while everything around them is moving. Yeah. Is this illegal? Sorry. Yeah, or oh, these are they are they are illegal. Yeah, they are not allowed. Yeah, thanks for that. Yeah. So most of the time, they always sort of like struggle with the metro cops because they don't want them to sell in that street, those in those streets and stuff. So always when they see metro cops, they have to run away, pick their stuffs, and then again when there are no cops, they pack again and that has. Any questions? Do they have always or, or mostly most of the time the same place where they go so mm -hmm. that there is a kind of system of the stands where you can find the room? Yeah. Or is there a big mix of where they go there wherever there is an empty place? All right. Yeah, in most cases, there's sort of like uh, a, a problem with the space because uh, they don't sort of like, the, there are many sort of traders in the city and now the space becomes a problem. So sometimes you find that yeah, you can see the same person maybe in one spot, maybe twice. And then when you come again, you find that maybe there's a different person now. Yeah, and also sometimes they sort of like, they do sort of like some land claims. They claim that, no, this is my space and stuff. And some of the spaces are also in front of the shops. So that creates tension between the shop owners and the traders. Yeah, I'm not sure if maybe I did answer your question. No, all right. Uh, so then we'll go to the other one, the one that I also did in the township. I called it uh, Township Bodybuilders. So this was sort of like uh, a straight on documentary on Township Bodybuilders that I used to train with. So I was also interested in the space that they were using and also uh, the, the, the equipment that they were also training using because it was sort of like not the best, but it was good enough to make them what they want to be. And so I decided to use black and white in this one because 
I feel sometimes I feel like black and white it's sort of like more real. It's my own personal point of view. So they normally call themselves like Intaba. It's it's in, in, in Zulu and Xhosa. With English it's sort of like mountains because they believe that one day they will be huge like mountains. <laughs> <laughs> Did they like the yeah, like they sort of like these ones are uh, my friend. I was sort of like training with them before. So they are very, very uh, familiar with me. What are Yeah, it's sort of like the the, 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 the the gym rules in the background. Say no pain, no gain on top. <laughs> then the other one sort of like respect. So it sort of like goes hand in hand with what he is doing, sort of like he's bowing. <laughs> yeah. Here he was like done with the press ups, he was doing the press up and then he was getting up. No, it's sort of like we, we are not talking English. But then in South Africa, we have 11 different languages. So the one that sort of like the language that combines us together, sort of like English. If you speak English, everyone can hear you. But if you're going to speak sort of like our own different languages, it will be hard for us to hear each other. So we use in, they use English sort of like to communicate with everyone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, no, no. It was only like black men. Yeah. <laughs> but I think they chose for themselves. Yeah. yeah. It was not sort of like a, a rule or something. Yeah. So this one uh, was sort of like uh, exploring their personal space, also trying to mix uh, the relation between their personal space and uh, sort of like what they do and stuff. So I wanted to also capture that kind of a lifestyle, but still, I think I still have to work on in this sort of like kind of a thing. I, don't, I didn't want to sort of like only focus on the gym and then... Uh, so the other one, it's... Also about uh, the, the trader, so it's, I changed to, I was working with digital, the first one, so this one I decided to do it with the film, so it's sort of like a continuation of the traders, of which I'm still working on it. So may I ask again, so the first was digital, you showed Yeah, they were digital. Are film. film, yeah, yeah. yeah.
normally when uh, I was sort of like taught at school, they said we don't uh, sort of like create images, we take images. So I take as I don't crop them. Yeah. <clears throat> and what would you say is the difference for you between uh, um, a digital and analog photography? Ah, uh, uh, specifically with this work, it's point number one. It's color. The color it's completely different. So with digital, it was a bit sort of like yellow, warm, and this is sort of like a bit natural, yeah. And again, in terms of the quality, the movement is not like as if digital. Digital was sort of like more soft and stuff. So this is sort of like, it's, it's a bit uh, good for me, I think. Yeah, in, in, in a way it was very, very hard because they, it's, it's hard for them to accept like an outsider because I was sort of like an outsider from them. I was not also a part of them. I was not a trader. So it was a bit hard for them to accept me. I had to go there several times without a camera, speaking to them, talking to them until they, 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 they were loose. And then, yeah, we find that maybe... <clears throat> to sort of like get one image, it could take me a week. I have to go there, negotiate, when I take out the camera, maybe it's not what I want, maybe the, the people are too posing for me, then I have to come again until, uh, until I got what I think I wanted. Yeah. But in a way, it was also challenging because these photographs, I took them at night, you see, and then at night anything might happen, more especially in Johannesburg. But if I told myself that if they also like are selling and doing their activities at night and no one sort of like is the security or something that is and sort of like watching over them, why not I can't take my own camera and take the same risk that they are doing? Uh, So this was, uh, he's the musician, he comes from, because I sort of like did some other interviews with them. He comes from uh, Tanzania. He said he's been to five different countries, so what he's doing now is sort of like, he's trying to gather the money to carry on to, to buy some other things that he need and sort of like to combine uh, the money and do sort of like some uh, videos and some discs so that he can be sort of like strong in the music industry because for now there's no one who's supporting him. So he has to do sort of like, he has to learn the hard way, he has to combine all the things for himself and then hopefully that one day he will become a musician. And this one also is coming from Tanzania. Uh, mostly people who come from Tanzania, they are from a city called Dar es Salaam because that is their big city. So other people like besides uh, the Dar es Salaam, it's hard for them to come in South Africa or yeah, because they are a bit like afraid of taking risks. But this, because they are in Dar es Salaam, sort of like it's a big city, they are used to many people. And this one was also coming from Malawi. So also what made me to be much, much interested in working with them was that these people, they have sort of like a nice background and like good, good stories. So sometimes you might see them like sailing on the street and think that, no, these guys sort of like they don't have nothing to do and stuff. But then they really like made a lot to come there and sort of like the effort that they, put, they are putting to be there, it's sort of like hard. It's, it's not just uh, a game or something. These people like they really, really are uh, trying hard to make their own livings, to, 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 to push, to, to, to sort of like sustain themselves with those goods that they are selling. And this guy was coming 
he comes from uh, Zimbabwe. He's a 17 years old. He was also saying that uh, he struggled with the money to go to school, but hopefully that maybe he he can be able to gather maybe enough money after maybe four to five years. Then he's also aiming to go to school one day. Because I also had the interest that, <clears throat> at first when I saw them, I was wondering like, what's the reason with those people just coming on the street and then selling? What about their dreams? Uh, surely they didn't want to be street like street uh, vendors before. Maybe there were some other things that they wanted to do besides that. But then, because of maybe their backgrounds and their difficulties, so they had to start somewhere. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Sorry? No, uh, it's sort of like my own <laughs> point of view. I decided not to include the customers because my story is about them. I'm talking about them and about uh, what they are doing. So I decided not to include the customers. Maybe that's another thing maybe I can consider maybe when time goes on. Yeah. Uh, mostly, all right. <laughs> yeah, mostly uh, sort of like like uh, uh, sort of like magazine catalog or it's sort of like in a gallery uh, space because if it's in the magazine or it's in the gallery, like you can engage with the image more. It's not like as if in the slideshow or something like sort of like it's passing by. But then in sort of if it's in the the book, it's sort of like it's permanent. You can look it and over and over and over again. So I prefer sort of like uh, hard copies. Uh, uh, mostly it will depend because uh, in this uh, series, it's sort of like uh, when I work, I sort of like have the same idea, sort of like a concept, then from that concept I developed some single ideas. So each and every image it's sort of like it's talking a different language. So you'll find that some images I can blow them big, some I can make them small. Yeah, on some academy, I was sort of like thinking about it, and yesterday I tried to sort of like uh, write some ideas down. But for now, uh, I don't want to limit myself and say I will specifically focus on this. I sort of like I'm photographing like uh, the summer academy as a whole, and what I sort of like on my own point of, my own point of view, I see is like it's interesting and it's sort of like useful for 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 for, for the summer academy and what uh, sort of like. It's beneficial to, to the students and also to the trainers because at the same time, both of them, they learn. The students learn some things to the trainers and also the trainers learn some things to the students. So it's sort of like that inter interaction and engagement. Yeah, sort of like I'm interested. Mm -hmm. Sorry? Uh, no, I arrived on Sunday, this Sunday, yeah. But so far, I've, I've sort of like, I've learned a lot and I'm, I'm more interested uh, in the summer academy. I think it's a, it's a good one. 
Mm. Other questions? Uh, for now, uh, I don't have a sponsor. Yeah, I sort of like uh, I try by all means uh, to collect the money and then buy the film and then photograph. Maybe then after maybe some few months, I go to process. But in a way, I think you have to start somewhere. It, you can't just like in the beginning of uh, a, a project and then you ask you you expect someone to sort of like give you something or to spawn. You have also to do your sort of like to to to, to do yourself some some input, you have also to sort of like sacrifice some other things if you really ra you really love a certain thing. You sort of like have to push yourself. Then if you get someone, or they can sort of like meet you halfway and then take you somewhere. Uh -huh. uh, when did you start uh, learning photography? Have you been in the LMDO for the first All right. Uh, basically, I started uh, photo photographing when I was around 16 years. I was sort of like photographing in school, sort of like when we have parties, and also the students, if they want some images, I would photograph them, and then they would pay me. <laughs> yeah. So I when I, I I got like interested, like yeah, I wanted to sort of like explore more. So I but then I started with uh, portrait, like dealing with people. And then uh, sometimes I also like think that yeah I maybe have to sort of like visit or sort of like try other genres besides uh, dealing with uh, maybe social social documentaries and stuff. But for now I think for me it's very very important for me to do this kind of work because I think there are still like lots of issues that we still have to deal about before like moving to others. I would love also maybe to sort of like do more conceptual work. But for now, I think it's it's still very important for me to kind of sort of like focus in this kind of uh, photography. I don't know, maybe if <laughs> you answered. All right. Chance. Uh, thank you all. Thank you for coming. And <laughs> <laughs>